I am King DJ. And I am King Perez. Y'all know how the fuck we do. We back like cook crack. We ain't never going nowhere, man. I, I hope y'all love this show like we love y'all because it's a for show that we love y'all, man. Y'all know how we do it before we go anywhere and proceed to this show. We got to start off with that rocket and drop it for the week. That rocket and drop it is a uh, producer. Meet y'all mighty, meet y'all mighty fake love, so make sure y'all hit them views, make sure you hit them polls, tell them how y'all feel about that, and run that shit up for them. Fuck the fake love, I'd rather see the real hate. Check in the polls. How you feel about that? How you feel about that before we before we jump into everything? You know, y'all see we got somebody on the floor again. We on our DJ Cali shit. Another one. <laughs> and this about to be another dope ass episode. Last, we done had the last couple artists that done came in, they did the rock of the drop because it was their music, but nah. So how do you feel about it? The song? Yeah. Oh, I like it. I'm rocking with it. Oh, I'm okay. Yeah. Do I need to give my, are we gonna play it or? No, it's already, they, they, they heard it. Heard it. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so it's, it's yeah. giving me wavy gang vibes. Heavy, <laughs> heavy wavy gang. Yeah. So I'm like, these are baby cakes. Lord. <laughs> she said she rocked it. That's yeah, fire, that's I fire. Like and that'd be, that's good to be uh, compared to somebody who actually professionally doing this shit. Yeah, for sure, yeah. What about you, P? How you feeling about it? You know, I roll with it. It's the home of course. You know, always good music yeah. in the camp, so, you know, we vibe. Y'all know I fucks with it, man. Y'all know I fucks with it. That's another one I'm biased by, man. That's the producer me to Almighty, man. That's the Almighty game, bro. So, you already know how that is, so. You know, we gonna, we gonna keep that shit there. So but y'all know how we like to do it. Shoot that bitch in them polls. Make sure y'all hit them views. Tell him, tell him how y'all feel about it. Tell him. Be real. Tell him how y'all like it. Then we gonna, we, gonna, we gonna go from there, right? And we good. Ah, like I said, man, we got somebody on the, on the stage, man. And this is crazy because ah, she, she low-key, low-key the shit. Like, I've been following her for a little minute and I've been... I don't know, I don't seen I don't seen her work, man. I don't seen her work. So now it's time for me to tap in and actually be able to, you know, pick her mind. You know what I'm saying? You know, we got somebody on stage who says she got the golden ear. She the lady with the motherfucking golden ear. Like that's that's plain and simple. She got R and B acts, she got motherfucking rap acts, uh, she, you you working on kids now, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Not for real, no. Come on, man. <laughs> Yes, you don't promote it. Come on, man. Don't send all the kids to you. Y'all send all the kids. Don't turn into a daycare. No, this is Carita, man. Carita so Miller, funny. man. We about to go crazy. This. <laughs> we about to go crazy this whole show, man. Not just picking her mind, but just enjoying her vibe and enjoying her energy, man. So make sure y'all, uh, make sure y'all hit them, hit them, hit them uh, likes, and make sure y'all hit them. Pop on her. Her social media, you know, see what she's working with. Check her acts out, you know. And y'all definitely gonna uh, enjoy her by the end of this show. Right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. That's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get to it, man. The first question that I want to get to asking you is a combinational question of uh, how long you've been uh, managing and what made you start to manage. Okay, so I've been actively doing this for the last four years since COVID. And what made me do it, um, 
music has always been my niche. It's always been me. Um, but it's kind of like one thing led to a domino effect of like three or four different things and management being one of them. Um, the young lady that I manage now, when I first started, I really wanted to manage her like <laughs> bad. Who like, was that? Ariel, Ari B. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, she got her, she revamped her name. Yeah, yeah, she Ari did. Ari B. Cold. I'm still getting used to calling her yeah. Ari B, as you can see. Yeah, I, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so when um, we finally got together three years later, uh -huh. and it's just. So it's so so you saying it started off with you doing music yourself? Not doing music. Okay, so um, during COVID, I started a show on Facebook called uh, Music Mondays, mm -hmm. and I don't know how old you are, <laughs> <laughs> but since I'm giving away my age a little bit, I'm thirty five. <laughs> I don't know. There's <laughs> right, a group from back in the day named Men at Large. And they were kind of big back in the day. And um, this guy from the group, Dave, he and I were doing the Music Mondays on Facebook. Uh -huh. And I was introducing him to all these new artists that I know even he don't know about. And he actually, so you stand corrected, he gave me the name with the lady with the golden hair. Mm. I didn't give myself that name. I don't. <laughs> I don't own that at all. I'm I'm owning the name now because that's what that's I was your, given, your brain. and I love it. And it's what it stands for is 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 everything. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it yeah, if, it, if, it, if you follow your track records, the artists that you've been working with, and we're gonna tap into this too, yeah. more of this throughout the show. The artists that you've been working with, and the you know your catalog is it, it fit like you you got some shit in your back pocket. Yeah, mm -hmm. and not only that, the artists that I can introduce you to outside of them to uh, and that's I the, know I can introduce you to some good artists. Good connections, and yeah. that's that's the thing. Like mm -hmm. we always think that that knowing is the whole journey, yeah. or wanting to do, or it's my passion. When in our actuality, yeah, if it's your passion, but how how can you connect with somebody? Yeah, you know, absolutely. What, what's your lane on that aspect? Because just knowing to get you at home. Singing your own music, playing your own music, recording your own music. And that's kind of what the lady with the golden ear is all about. I find the artist and then I connect with them. Mm. Some kind of way I have a lot going on. So some kind of way we're going to work. Be it an interview on my podcast. Be it a sync placement in a movie. Be it you work with my work with my artist on a song or mm -hmm. something. Some kind of way we're going to work. collaboration. Yeah. So. so when you get your artist, how, matter of fact, not when you get your artists. How do you, are you finding artists or are artists finding you? Or? Um, more so, it seems like they've been finding me. <laughs> and that's, that's, before, before we tap too much into that, that's a blessing. Yeah. That's a it blessing is. because, like you say, man, you started off right before COVID and it was just you looking for, to, looking to work with one. Yeah. And one said, nah, man, like, this is plentiful. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So. And she didn't, she didn't even give in. It took her three years to say yes. So I'm like, how did you? How did this? Let's let's the first artist. What what gravitated you to, R. E. B. To say her voice. Yeah. To it's, say, but how did you say like I want to manage her? Her right voice. Of all people. Her voice. Her look. To me, that just just the outer, outside looking in, she had the package. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. that's R. E. B. Make sure y'all tap into that's her that's her shit right there. So if y'all want to see, hear, look, all of that shit that she she talking on. Yeah. Make sure y'all tap in. And then of course, in. just me and her mom, we've been friends for since forever since mm -hmm. I was a teenager. So see. that just made it all that much better. See, so it all seemed like it all started from a connection. Mm -hmm. The man gave you the the, the name. Yeah, from the name that mom gave you, the first artist, and then from there it just been up. Like you talking about how you can connect with other artists, and it ain't you're not selfish. I'm not hearing selfishness. It's no, it's, it's what I can do for you. Absolutely, it's what not we can just, do for each other. Yeah, not just, it's all, a team. We always say we big on networking because yeah. you know we we roll it as a family. Yeah. You know, so you never know when you got to call on somebody. Right. And you know, make shit happen. So you That's know, right. we like to stay connected. That's right. That's right. So what made you? What made you start taking it serious? 
Like once you got Ari B, so you could have stopped there. What made you say, all right, I'm gonna take more? Cause how many artists you got around about? Seven or eight. That's, see, that's a good, that's a good count. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then, like, how can you? How are you? How are you connecting? Cause you said you gotta connect with each one. How are you connecting with each one differently? And they own individual. Everybody's in their own space. Everybody's doing different things. Everybody's at different levels. So <clears throat> the first thing that I make sure of when we get together is the business. Let's make sure that all the business is lined up. <laughs> That's the first thing for me. So once we get that going, then we can start working on other stuff. Um, some people are, are, are slow at doing stuff. That getting the, like I I don't force my hand on nobody. I tell mm. you what I want you to do or what I need you to do, and when we do it, then we move forward. I, however long that take. Take you, okay. Yeah. I like that because it's almost like it's it's a twofold. I'm catching on a twofold. I'm giving you a rope to hang yourself to see if you're serious or not. But then I'm not gonna be on your ass micromanaging mm -mm. because people we hate micromanaging. Ooh. And as a man, of I cannot. You know what I'm saying? I can't. I have, a, I have so much going on. There's no way I can micromanage if I See? want to. So. Have you ever had a situation where you felt like where an artist came to you and said you have given one more energy than the other? No one's come to me and said that. Have, have you felt like I that? I feel like that. <laughs> mm. Mm. See, that's dope as yes. hell. See, but, you know, but again, everybody is in different, is at a different level. So it's yeah. depending on what you're doing and, and how you're moving. If I ask you to do something and you do it, we moving forward. Again, if you're not doing the things that I ask you to do, then we're going to stay stuck right there. Yeah. yeah. So, like, so it's all off you. Yeah. It's all off you. I need for you to motivate me. To do for you. Yeah. Cause the manager is like pretty much like a lawyer, bro. I'm I'm, I'm literally like your best friend. All of that. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm trying to put you in. I'm gonna manage your life, yo. Every, you could call me about whatever. That's a fact. I mean, it ain't gotta be work. You can call me about your man, your girl, your boy, whatever he got going on. You <laughs> did this. You mad at him for this? <laughs> you ever call me about you know, all that? Write a diss track? <laughs> no, no, no. I write a diss track to, on that bitch. You know, one of my artists <laughs> called me and said that he did that. <laughs> <laughs> but I try to keep my artists out of that lane. Mm -hmm. But if you want to do that again, it's I'm not going to stop you from this shit. You already called me and said you did it. So what could I it's say at that point? <laughs> so, so as a manager. What are you managing? Like, if, if, are you managing, let's say, if I come to you and I say, I'm a rapper, whatever, right? And I got my little portfolio, give you that. Do you, have you ever came to an account where you seen, okay, yeah, he said he a rapper, but I see something more or different. So we we'll use this rap as a platform. But we gonna level up on some different shit. You know what I'm saying? It was so funny. Talk your shit. No, I didn't get that. <laughs> but I had an artist that I signed uh, under my management early on, mm -hmm. and I did not know he was a comedian. Mm. So we parted ways, and he leveled up on the comedian tip. Big time. <laughs> I mean, to me. I'm like, dang, I didn't know. And, and he was a better comedian. See? But see. but but he's still doing the music is good. I don't good. I don't know. I, I'm not gonna say he's a better comedian or a better rapper. I don't know, because I like the music a lot. It's just his name was but, more prominent with comedian comedy. I mean, that's good. Yeah. I ain't that ops. Well, I think I say, man, Detroit taking over in everything, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very I'm very <laughs> proud. I mean I tell him all the time, like I'm very proud because he out here doing his thing right now. And that's a blessing, man. Yeah, it is. That's why I say, man, like I was just about to say, Detroit taking over everything, man. Like, at first it was just music for the longest. Yeah. And then now it's like music. The whole the whole circumference of art, like music, uh, the designing, mm -hmm. movies, sure, you know, all, everything. Like, you hear people on the radios talking about, too, and the first thing they lead to <laughs> is Detroit. You know what I'm saying? 
the the the, 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 the music it. game on radio when you hear mm -hmm. all these the first thing they're talking about is Detroit. Mm -hmm. How large our catalog is in so much different shit. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying that's why I say, man, ain't no, Detroit is and now you see so many people talking down on us from around the way. <laughs> and it ain't doing nothing but bigging us up. I don't know, I'm glad. You I'm know, the, the thing about that is everybody that came from out of town that used to, you know, do all the videos, used to do all the productions, they was, they was taxing us. Yeah. And a lot of people started saying, like, I'm not about to get taxed, you know, like this and I can do it myself. And a lot yeah. of people just started getting into it and do it themselves. And they That's started right. going to school and buying their equipment and learning how to do it themselves. Yeah. So, you know, we we basically moved it in house. Yeah. You know, instead of going to New York, going to Atlanta and stuff like exactly. that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We started keeping that shit at home. Exactly. So So back to you. What is a situation that you ran into with an artist that you felt like pretty much made a big effect in your career, good or bad? Like something that you dealt with with an artist, good or bad, that affected your career and you said, okay, I'm going to keep this tip and I'm going to run with this. This is the part of my mantra. Oh, That's a thinker. Go ahead, take your time. Um, I don't know if I've had. Uh, I don't know if my run has been long enough yet. I don't know if I've had that artist yet. So, so. Yeah. So, where did you gain your knowledge from management from there? Okay, so, um, <laughs> as a, let me start with the beginning. As a kid, mm -hmm. my mom, she's been in the entertainment industry all my life. So, I knew growing up that I was going to be in the music industry some kind of way. Mm -hmm. It's just so many different things to do in the music industry, I could never pinpoint it. I thought I wanted to be an a and &R. But as I grew older, I'm like, everybody already got the established a and how I'm going to do that. Yep. So, um, when COVID came, I started doing all the, the things on Facebook. And then um, I was asked to do music for movies, um, be a music supervisor. So, mm -hmm. I'm placing music in movies. And then I was asked to write for a magazine. And then I was asked to manage and do a and for a label. So, all that started happening. All that happened all at once. So I honestly. So you went from music and movies to to in a magazine to where I wasn't doing any of this before COVID. I was actually just living a regular life, <laughs> you know, um, customer service or whatever. That's been my skill set forever. Um, I went to Specs Howard back in. 2003, I graduated mm -hmm. with a video production degree or a certificate. I worked at the radio station, WGLB, under Chris Kelly as her midday show producer. Uh -huh. I did that. For, I interned there for about eight months. But then I had a kid, so I gave all of that up so I could be a mother. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because my mom, like I said, her being in the industry all my life, she was always out of town doing different things. So I'm like, mm, I want to go ahead and let my kid have their mom 100%. Yep. And I'm going to give up on what I want to do. And then... Like I said, during COVID, God just gave it all to me. So that's kind of how I got here. <laughs> I'm that, bro. That's kind of how I got here. Um, so I'm sorry. What was the question? <laughs> I had. I felt like I had to give you that to get to where. But I, I like going. that backtrack. I don't fuck the question. I like that because I actually forgot the question too. <laughs> but I like that backtrack. So you you saying like you had you lived a regular life before COVID and this shit just just stumbled across you and now you started management. Yeah. No, my baby. So you how did I get the, how did I get the knowledge? Yeah, you, but you've been in this shit though. I've been in it, right? But I still didn't have the knowledge for real. Um, I've been around it all my life, but I still didn't have the knowledge that I have today. When I started music supervising. <laughs> I had no idea what the heck a music supervisor was. was. He just asked if I wanted to do the soundtrack for the movie, and I was like, yeah. 
A Tubi movie? Yeah. What, what movie? The first movie was He Said, She Said. I have like 14, 15 movies Ooh. out to date that I've used to supervise. <laughs> Catalog. Catalog. So, um, I did that, right? My first movie. But I knew that it wasn't done right legally. Mm -hmm. I knew how to pick the music and place it where I wanted it to go and this and that, but I knew that it was way more to it on yeah. the legal side. Yeah. So I started picking up books, reading. I'm going to different, anything free. It's Y'all don't tell me about what you can't learn and what you can't find and this and that. It's all right there yeah. on the internet. Everything. I, <laughs> I find so much good stuff on the internet. I found so many free webinars, free classes, free this, free that. I did everything that I could free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every certificate for free. Yes, I'm not and, supposed and guess to what? There was no certificates involved in none of the free stuff I knowledge. did. It was just strictly knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, and then I decided, okay, I'm going to go to Berkeley College of Music. So now I'm in college, my second year, and I'm going for a music business degree. Um, and that's kind of to solidify the things that I taught myself along the way and teach myself whatever else it is that I don't know. So, so that's so how I got the knowledge. So that's the knowledge. How did you get the connections? Oh, okay. Well, the connections have been there um, with my mom. and. Mm, so you was ground rooted in this shit. Yeah, they've been there. Mm. I, it's really, I should have been doing this. A long time ago. Yeah, but the timing is everything. Mom, I was about to say, my motherhood trumps, yeah. for real. Yeah, and timing is yeah. everything. I wasn't ready to even be before the kids, and I just wasn't ready mentally for this but then. The, but the press, so. but the prep coming to it. Yeah. Specs. I don't know if y'all know about Specs. Man, that was back in the day, that was one of the biggest yeah. Yeah. Everybody, everybody went to that college for entertainment. You know what I'm saying? Everybody. I know about it. Everybody was going yeah. to Specs. Literally, yeah. then the radio, then then the music uh, uh, supervisor. Like, you, and then, but you, you try to short term and say, I was in uh, customer service before. I was. All of, it, all of it's customer service for what you're doing now, though. It all plays a circumference of, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I stopped the radio, well, my son was born in 2003, so that stopped in like maybe 04, 05, and I never did anything in entertainment after that, never. Then it started, when and then COVID, 2020? 2020. Mm -hmm. Then it's been up every since. So what? what's your biggest, what's, what's, okay, what was one of your, another two-part question? What was one of your biggest hindrance in management? And what was one of your biggest hindrance of dealing with an artist? Two different things. You know what I'm saying? One is the business, and then one is the one-on-one. -on -one. <sighs> the one-on-one -on -one is just getting them to do the things that you want them to do. To see your vision for yeah. them? Yeah. Um, they get so wrapped up into the creative space, they forget about the business. And I'm the kind of manager that, if I manage you, I need you to learn the business. I don't expect for you to do any of this, right? but I want you to know it so that when we, or if we happen to part ways, can't nothing happen to you. You can't say nobody fucks you over or no shit right. like that because I taught you everything. Right. Or even why you dealing with me. That's building trust. I'm showing you what I'm doing, so what I'm, I'm gonna doing, show you. you know that it's being done, right? You gonna have look. We got a, a share. No, here go the account information. <laughs> here go all that. I ain't doing nothing tricky. I I can't. <laughs> my mom, I, my mother, has she. Listen, her background is no way I could go behind her and walk in these shoes right now and try to fuck anybody over. That's a blessing. I can't do that. Always, so, me and DJ, we I always. We always talk about it, and I tell them, you know, the business side of it, most people get caught up in the creative side of it. Yeah, you it's, know what I'm saying? They don't, yeah. don't understand the business, and that's why you see so many artists, you know, either end up broke, yeah, you know, or end up sued, 
Which they when they create quick the label, creative, you know they what I'm should be wrapped up into that. But just don't forget about the business part. Mm -hmm. Especially when you start out doing it yourself. You gotta learn the ins and out of what you're doing. It's not just music and put it out. It's a whole your business now. <laughs> yeah. To me the creative part always just came easy if you create yeah, it. Yeah, that's only ten percent of it. it. It's, it's oh, like it's a no brainer. That's only ten percent yeah, of you it. You gotta go in there and do what you do. So what's that? Business. Business. Yeah, you, yeah, got, you, know. you got you got royalties. You got masters. You got uh, copyright. Copyright. It's, All it's so that. much stuff that. Entwined into that that people don't know about. You gotta know where to sign up to get all the royalties. It's just mm -hmm. five, six different places. You gotta just sign up and make sure you register for it just to get all your royalties. So I wanna ask you this as a manager. This is a, this is a question that you would ask an artist, but from a management perspective, right? So as an artist, as I would ask an artist. What part is, uh, uh, or how much fun are you having being where you at? You know what I'm saying? Like, an artist, like, like you said, it's only 10% creative, creativity. The rest is business. Let's say you got a motherfucker who, who can go, who can, they do their thing, but they literally have no understanding of the business perspective, right? They alone at this point, but they trying, right? Like, you know. When it when would you stop? And most of the time they say when it stop being fun. You know what I'm saying? When would you stop doing this? When it stop being fun? But as a manager, ten percent is the only fun. The rest of this, the ninety percent is serious. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So how are you creating that balance for them to say, right? Yeah, this is fun, but I'm, I want you to keep on doing it. So. It kind of like equal out. I just take care of the ninety. Simply said. <laughs> <laughs> I love what I do. I love what I do. So everything from the stupidest thing from registering, <laughs> <laughs> from registering the songs and all that. I love all of that. So I, it's just a joy for me to do that, and it's the whole process in it. I love it all. Is so. it it's long nights for you? Yeah. Do you do you studio trip with your artists? Nope. <laughs> mm -mm. Mm -mm. I ain't, nope. So I'm not there to tell you how to sing. Just that. Nope. Mm -mm. Mm. Hopefully we got a dope ass producer, a good ass engineer. Hopefully they got some input, and hopefully you got this, cause. Cause on that side, that's on them. Yeah, no, I got. I'm sorry, but I got too many things to do. I would. I would. I would, but. Thank God they don't like Request they don't act like babies and be like, Oh, I want you to come. So thank God. So but I will go. I have been. I have been. That's so but you really too. I was just about to say, so you really don't really care for it or is that something that you just I just have so many other things. Other, While I'm okay, sitting okay. at the studio, I'm thinking about twenty things I could do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you really not even I got it. homework. I got I could be just I could be Promoting, I could be making connections. I could be, <laughs> I could be just doing something productive besides sitting at the studio. And that's actually exactly where I'm leading to. It's 2024. You started in COVID. The transition from COVID to now has changed so dramatically. So how are you keeping up with the trends between back then to now of music? I stay on them on them streaming platforms. First of all, I. I subscribe to every last one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, it was going on. I subscribe to every last one of them. I know typically on Fridays is the new release date. Yep. So I'm one of them kind of people that if, especially if it's hip hop, R and B, so mm -hmm. I'm I'm already just gonna hit the plus sign. I don't care who it is, and I'm gonna listen to it. And if I like it, I'm gonna keep it. If I don't like it, I'm what you say, uh Get rid of that shit. Yeah. No, what was the thing Rockin at the beginning? Rockin 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 right. It's like either I'ma delete it or I'm gonna keep it. You feel mm -hmm. me? And and then this is where I go make connections with the artists. Cause most mm -hmm. times when you find them, they still come back. They the girl got five thousand followers, ain't nowhere yet. So yeah, that's where I go make connections to try to do some business. So how are you uh 
because you're the lady with the golden ear. How are you? What are you? How are you critiquing this music? When you hear it on them Fridays, on them drops, somebody sends you some shit. What are you listening for? Mix and mastering? You listening for the knowledge? What you listening for? I don't even know if my ear is not for mix and master yet. I don't know if I could tell you. Nah, if it's, if it's just if the raw is cut and it sounds horrible, I'm going to be like, wait, this don't sound right. But it's been some times that people or my artists that send me a song and I'm like, oh, this, they be like, it's not even master yet. And I'm like, oh. oh. <laughs> like, 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 I'm still trying to figure out how the heck do I tell that. But another thing is, a lot of times when I'm listening to it, I'm listening to it on my phone. Not on a real sound system, probably, right. where I could tell that right. either. Right. right. And I'm learning that that's a difference. I need to listen to it on a sound system, and I'll probably be able to tell. And loud, too. And loud. Yeah, and loud. So, uh, most times, it's right there on my phone. I'm listening to it, not mm -hmm. on the sound system. So, how do you so continue? What are you listening for? To say but, um, whether this is good or not? Um, or whether this is even something I think you for me, the first thing that catches me is the production, the beat, mm -hmm. um, how that sounds. That's always, um, um, more, most of the time. Yeah, the majority of the time. If you're an R&B artist, of course, I want to hear you singing good. <laughs> um, but... Mm. Nowadays, I think people are more... Into the instrumental and the beats instead of the wordplay. I mean, if you got good wordplay, that's a bonus. But I think what moves more people is the uh, the music nowadays. And that honestly is what's getting me mostly is the is the music. After I don't know, it's so weird because I say I want to hear you be able to sing, but then I'm thinking about just one song or a couple artists that are known that I personally feel like they don't have the best voice but their music is still the shit. Cause I feel like sometimes you cannot sing that great, but it's the melody you sing on over the beat. And that too. You know what I'm saying? So I think the first thing the the very first thing is the beat. After so long then I'm listening to the wordplay, what you saying, how you saying it, mm -hmm. this and that, your whole overall delivery. So, what about if an artist come to you, your artist, now we in house, mm -hmm. and say, this is this, you critique it, you, have you ever not liked it, how's your dialogue to them, is it wrong like and cut? I don't like it. So, okay. <laughs> so, <you're like laughs> keep it real with it, yeah. I don't like it. The best answer, 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 it could be mm, maybe you're using too much of one instrument. <laughs> so you 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 getting it with an explanation. Just I try to. <laughs> so you don't have some. <laughs> so you don't have some shit that you don't that don't drive you guys. Yeah, you been lap. too many songs from my artist though. It ain't been too many songs. I know what had what has happened. I was just about to say somebody trying to come be a, be that a for knife, you know. Someone sent me a song. Uh, what do you call it? A demo mm -hmm. for my artist. I was like, bruh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I got so defensive. I'm like, what if she don't like it? Like, I'm like, ain't no options. Like, what the heck? We sing about all these beats. That's the only song we get. And that, really that girl went that and time. recorded that song and called me. And I ain't gonna let y'all cry. Did she like it? I cried. <laughs> <laughs> she liked it. That's what she was like, I like it. It's not that bad. I'm like, okay. And when she called me with the song, I cried. I was like, oh, that's the same song. <laughs> the same song man, that they sent me earlier. Like... So what's the highs though? Let's get to the highs. Let's get to the highs. What's the... What, somebody drops something in your lap. How are you... Because there got to be a balance, right? Take the good with the bad. So how are you telling them on a good note? I like it. I love it. <laughs> okay, so. um, you know, I don't, I don't give a real detailed critique is what I find. I'm not... 
So you choose to kind of like keep your emotions out of it and keep more business aspect. So keep yeah. the business aspect. Yeah, like I, I see, I, I get geek. <laughs> if I hear some good music, I'm like, I'm but like, see, especially if I can feel it. If I feel, if I, I love R&B music. I love soul music. I love music that can talk to me, that can speak to me. And I feel like, remember, the, remember, the, remember radio. Somebody, oh, okay. Somebody sent me something <laughs> one morning early. Mm -hmm. And it was some rap. Now, I'm harder on rap than the accord. Than I, my ear, I think, is more king for R&B. Mm -hmm. It's more honed into the R&B. But I love rap. Don't get me wrong, but I'm harder on rap. I listened to that damn project about four times in a row. And I kept in my cell like, what the hell? How you gonna send me this this early in the morning? Like, where, where you come from with this? Like, are you serious? I, yeah, so I do sometimes get that excited about it. Because um, that's how I feel. I, when I listen to music, if it's good, if it's bad, I tell you. Like, yeah, I don't really, I, I'm gonna be real. I'm not gonna say card. I don't like it. I tell you where, why I don't like it, where I don't like it at. You know what I'm saying? You should have added a double on this or whatever. See, you, I'm not. See, I like to get in. Like, if, you know how you <laughs> add on to the voice. Like you can add on to the voice. Okay. Shit like see, it. she don't got the, the engineer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I know. know. The music. <laughs> see, and I guess that's, that's the difference between the music and the business aspect. Yeah. Because I love the music part of, of, yeah. of being in business. And when I when I hear good music and that shit touch my soul, my nigga, I'm about to tell you like, hey, hey, baby girl, run that back, run that back. This is what I think I need you. I need you to do to push this. We need to get some better. Now nah, I need to pull my connections. What yeah. I gotta do, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, like 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 we got so much good art in Detroit. We got so. See, much what I do is just run the streams up like crazy. That thanks. And then if I get a chance to tell you, I am going to tell you. Yeah. Like that one guy, I love so dang gone much. And when I saw him perform for probably the third time, I finally got like, you know what? You are really the shit I mean, in real life. Uh, Asaka. I know exactly who you're talking about. I know exactly. <sighs> Cole. And the catalog, though. And the consistency. It's, that he a local know, Detroit artist, and the boy he sing R &B. and rap. Yep, he R and B. He sing, he rap. I, the the first time I I done saw him perform maybe two or three times. The thankful for R and B with y'all. He done did a piston. He did performed at the piston. Yeah. All that type of shit. Good music, good music. And what I like more about him is his engagement with the crowd. The crowd go crazy. When I see him perform, I was like, well, How come I don't know who this is? Yeah. Everybody in here singing this song. Come on. What? <laughs> and I'm talking about I'm the lady with the golden hair. <laughs> but yeah, since then I've been on He's yeah. good. I like him a lot. Me and him have already talked, man. He on this way. He, he on this way. A good another dope artist. Good yeah, another dope he dope. It's a bunch of them. And it's a rock. It's a it's too many good artists in Detroit. That's a fact. It's too many. It's That's just like, oh my god. We done had so many on this. Man, you y'all that's why I love the fact that people who follow this show follow this show. This is not a a music platform. This is not a music based podcast. This is a we based in Michigan, so we just we we knowledge based, like for real, for real. But the love that we he got a music background, you know. I don't, but I'm around music, I'm around artists, you know what I'm saying? And the love but the love that we get from Michigan just from art. Itself yeah. makes us kind of gravitate towards music, you right. know what I'm saying? Right. Right. And even with different artists reaching out to us, like we started nine times out of ten, we're gonna have to drop the rock or drop it because of the legal shit, you right. know what I'm saying? The business right. aspect. But it's so many artists that reach out to us that just want to come on the show and enjoy a conversation. And you know, we like, you know, we real, we don't bash, we don't talk down. This is all straight promotion. We uplifting you and your art, you know what I'm saying. We gonna follow your catalog. Right. We, we we pay attention to who you are. We support right. before and after you come on the show. You know Same. what I'm saying? You know this is a family based home platform. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it. the music shit though, <laughs> <laughs> Detroit and art and music yeah, is crazy. just one and another, man. It is. 
R and B and rap. Yeah. Like, yeah. She kind of got that drill shit. Got some but, cold jazz people here too. Now. See, I gotta tap into that too. Now you know I'm a little older, so <laughs> <laughs> you know, nah, we gonna talk about them. Some good gospel people too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Y'all, I'm just saying, y'all. And we always had good gospel though. Why you was playing? We always had we always had good gospel. The kids on fire. Jesus. What was your what was your audition you did with the kids? I'm doing a talent showcase for kids. So don't make it seem like I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm not managing them. So what happens is my daughter, she dances background for this young lady who raps by the name of Casey Casey the model. I don't want to tell her the wrong. She might be like twelve now. Casey, Casey the model. model. She, yeah, and she been doing. She been doing this mm-hmm. since she was like three or four or something. She been been doing this. So, um, she real dope. But I'm doing a kids showcase uh-huh. on the sixteenth of March. Tessie. So, but yeah, but I don't manage. You know, uh-huh. my, my daughter is. How many? So she managed me, or <laughs> whatever. So how many kids know. is in your, in, in your motherhood? How many I have two. My son is son. my son is twenty. My daughter is thirteen. Oh, son of OG or becoming an OG. Yeah. Grown. So yeah. he in music? No. Is, is he in art? No. Oddly enough, I'm wondering. You know, he's still trying to find himself. I'm wondering if he will end up that way. But he says he wants to be a psychologist. That works for me. Yeah, yeah. These kids need help. I hope this is child child I need help, so he need to go here. <laughs> Lessons and stay inside of the community. Everybody needs you, man. Man, man, man. The kids, the kids just need to stick with them kids, man. Stay inside of the community. That I'm gonna say that. Mm-hmm. What about the daughter? She in art? Well, she so damn, she dance and mm-hmm. model, and that's about it. She's so are you managing her? Yeah. Is it by default? <laughs> yeah, it's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. So that she has a, a different management team or or no. she wanted a seven? It's just she's I didn't even include her. Right, so she's seven and a half. She just here. she she, <laughs> she she there anyway, so ain't nothing I can do about that. <laughs> And I'm sure you're teaching her the management game as you are. You know, she try to act like she don't want to deal with the business, the music and this. But I, again, I let my kids find their own way. She liked it. I know as a kid, I was really, really shy. I didn't want to get in front of no cameras. And my mama made me, though. She made me, Jesus. She made me get in front of the cameras. She made me get on the radio. She made me do all kind of stuff as a kid. Me, I'm not really making her do the things that I wished her to do. But she's really heavy into dancing, so I like that. Because I, I used to dance as a teenager, as a kid and stuff. So I'm living through her with that dance and stuff. So I try to just push her more towards that. And I keep her in a lot of different programs, business classes, or whatever I can find to elevate her mind and just to keep her mind going on the right path. Keep the neurons clicking. Yeah, she can't have all her time. She got to give some of it to me. I agree. I mean, so. we, we are firm. We yeah. firm believers of that. Yeah. I, you, already, you just heard me say the kids is the future. Yeah. Like you have to instill in your, your, your kids more than what school is doing. School can't be the dominant teacher. I... Go ahead. School can't, <laughs> school, can't, school can't be the dominant teacher. Like I, I, I say... I'm a father, you know. I, I got my kids in. Man, we can go there. <laughs> oh, I tell you. I hate to even. I hate. That's the episode. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. I you know hate it. I hate it. I feel like this. But I feel what like they not teaching is we, just we better only thing they, they teach them teaching. to do is to get up and have something to do on a daily basis. For eight and hours. Get them acclimated to them eight hours, but yeah. when they get there. School to prison pipeline. I don't yeah, we, think they we said that one shot. We the whole episode. They ain't yeah, we them talked nothing. about that before. Nothing you know, they need. It's no necessity. No. <laughs> I mean, no basis. It's not teaching them how to live I life. To not like teaching that, them how. To, you know, they credit. You know, not teaching them the, the jobs. They getting them ready for. It's, it's yeah, it's terrible. Right. Yeah, saying you can't allow school. Yes, yeah, school got that first eight hours. Yeah. But you can't allow school to control your child more than Wait. you can. Mm-hmm. I read a book. I forgot the name of the book, but it was talking about uh, domestication, right? Good and or bad. You domesticate an animal. 
Right. When you take an animal from the wild to the zoo, you domesticate that animal. Right. You domesticate a dog. Right. You know, you, you train the dog. We don't know that the society is domesticating us. <laughs> Therefore, society also domesticate our, our the youth. You know what I'm saying? So, it was a saying I read in the book that uh, grandma fed the the grand the, the grandma fed the kid whatever made the kid eat the vegetables. So the 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 child go from a child to an adult, and you either eat vegetables, saying that it's healthy because grandma said it, or you don't eat vegetables because she grandma made, made you. you mm -hmm. All right. So you it's it's all psychology. Psychology. Yeah. So you don't get more time with your kids than school on a day to day because you also have to work. Yeah. And then you have travel time, sleep time, and everything else. But you have to use psychology with your child. Strong psychology. Mm -hmm. They deal with this aspect, learning of how, how, how society should be. You deal with how the universe should be. So you teach your kids strongly efforts of good diets, uh, learn how to control your mind, uh, Debt, credit restoration, uh, business mindset, you know, things that school don't teach you. Right. How to live on a day-to-day -day basis. Right. You know, once you teach them that, they understand the difference between what school is teaching and what mom and dad is teaching. Exactly. Right? I agree with that. Life lessons. Yeah. That's the balance. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's always, it, it got to be a balance. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? We have balance between... Uh, music and business, you know what I'm saying. That ten gotta become a fifty at least. You know what I'm saying? Why? Because you intertwine it with them. They send you that music. You send them the business. You teaching them the business. They sending you the music. You know what I'm saying? You homing in with them, creating that balance, just as you doing with child motherhood. You know, you creating that balance with teaching her the business, putting her in them seminars. Well, also, oh, if you want to dance, I'm hard on you because you want to do it. Right. Now I'm going to be harder on you because you want to do it. Yeah. It's the balance. That's how I feel about it. I agree. That's how you hone me in with that. And then your kid get the understanding because you're expressing to them. Whether you had it or not as a youngster. You know, you say, you, and we getting into that too next. You speak on mom highly. You know, so you had it. But, you know, whether you had it or not. You tell them the knowledge and some experiences that you had and or didn't. Mm -hmm. And then they're able to make the decisions themselves. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So that'd be the blessing on it. Sure. So I love kids, man. I, I love oh, I love dealing with you, bro. I love, I love it. Yeah, but, like I said, you speak on mom a lot. So you spoke on mom before the show. You, know, you always <laughs> speak on mom everywhere we go. I think I seen her. <laughs> Was she at the RB? No. No. No, she was no. Okay, my no. mom. So you speak on mom. Let's let's tap into let's let's talk into mom. Let's talk about mom. So she her music background, her upbringing with you. Oh, you too young to remember, but she started out at Barton Cable. And you go, you're not gonna keep on. <laughs> you're not gonna keep on. And you better lean over here like he old enough to know. Man, I ain't that young, man. It was I'm, Barton Cable before it was Comcast. I remember that. Okay, yeah. He he I, I remember that. I remember that. This nigga's lying. I remember that, bro. We ain't had cable, bro. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't. I don't remember the name, but I remember before it was Comcast. Yeah. She had a couple video, video. Video, video shows. Uh -huh. Real, you know, back in the day we had video shows. <laughs> so she had a couple of video shows, a fashion show on there, and then she um, moved on to work at BT. So mm -hmm. we moved to D DC. I was what in the eighth grade, so we stayed there eighth to tenth grade. I think eleventh mm -hmm. grade year. I came back here, so we were out in DC for that amount of time. She was working for BT, which was. An experience for me. So you been around me, mm -hmm. man. Deep she around was the, um, Dance coordinator for the scene. That's where it really started. Uh huh. Now you know what the scene is. No, but I do. Remember, <laughs> no, but I do. I, I ain't gonna lie. No, but I do remember when she was on B. I do remember the BET, and I remember when you was talking about the uh the the, the sitcoms on the cable. The scene is a dance show that's that's Detroit based. 
I don't remember that. <laughs> oh, you when was and it was before you know, the new dance show. <laughs> it was before the new dance that show. Was the scenes, the new dance show, and then yeah. they changed it to something else. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So she worked as the dance coordinator on the scene. That's it was the what? Wait, hold on. Oh, it was the what? It's WADL. You think about Boss TV when you yeah. had cable. <laughs> All right, so I used to start. That's my era, Boss TV. <laughs> Right. And so I used to dance on the scene as a kid. Oh, bro. You know what I mean? Come with stuff. Age come wisdom. I gotta get there. Don't worry about it. I'll be on the That horse? Yeah. I was, it was probably about three kids that ever danced on there. I was one of them. So. <laughs> uh, now, I gotta, now I gotta do my uh, I did business. commercials for <laughs> Singleton Cleaners and Burger King back in the day with Mr. T. <laughs> <laughs> I was a baby back then. You tell your age. I was one of the head on. You see, look at him. Look at him. I wanted to hear about that story. That's black on crack, man. You better lift your head up for pride. She better lift her head up for pride, man. She take care of herself, man. She take care of herself. Oh, God. That's funny. Yeah, that was the era. Yeah, that was the era. You know what, old man? What do you think I am? That nigga seven. <laughs> that Whoa. nigga dirt. I'm 51. I was gonna say 40 something. Yeah, I'm 51. Okay, so you were the stuff I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't the only one. I was, um. It's the singles, is it? What is it? That's the first one. cleaners. It'd be like, we down, we down. And you'd be like, I don't see swimming. <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> you know Mason and you can zoom in on. I remember Mason. So I met Mason. Mason when I was young. I uh, you remember Coco and Foolish? Yeah, man, I met me and Coco. Oh, yeah, yeah. I used to have a crush on Coco. My the first big girl that I ever had a crush on. And then what made me crush her even more is I met her in person. Mm-hmm. And she, she cracked some jokes. Yeah. She gave me some pistons tickets. This is how I met Mason. I uh, it was a uh, uh, Black History Month. I was able to introduce the pistons. On the court and no. Spurs, dope as fuck. And she gave me the tickets. And then I ended up meeting her again at the cleaners. And I asked her, I, I was grown when I met her again at the cleaners. I mean, not the cleaners, the car wash. And I asked her, I said, You don't even remember me. I met you. And she was like, Nigga, I remember you. I gave you some tickets to the such and such, and you did a dog ass job. And I was like, Bro, that shit was amazing. You know what I'm saying? And I met Mason there. Yeah, I remember Mason. Yeah, so Mason had that opening day. He used to play every morning. Hello, Detroit. Yeah. And that little girl used to be like, Missy, you're fun in the morning. Yeah. That was you? Oh! That was me and my mom in grade number two! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so you been in the morning I did that when I was like eight years old. <laughs> and I'm like, I remember when I, I saw him, I was grown. I'm like, so. Can we change it? Can we get a different little girl? Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, I've never changed it. He's still the same. He's still the same. He's still the same. Never changing it. I'm like, wow. So your connection's been started since you was eight, man. And you, man. Man, yeah. right, what? Man, but, but so technically, like you just said, we got a legend in the building, man. <laughs> we got a legend in the building, man. Yeah, my mama used to work with Mojo back in the day. Yeah, yeah Mojo. I used to be up at the Pagan Scout building all the time. Yeah. yeah, so yeah you been around me all my life. This has just been. Mama got you in the game and you ain't even know why you sitting up here with your head down yeah. talking about I hated it, I hated it. No, that molded you into what you got and what you doing yeah. now. Yeah. What you mean? But the what commercials mean? all ain't left us. We could have left the commercials out. <laughs> but but I, I'm glad she said that because then that let me know where I want to be in this. Yeah. That let me know I for sure don't want to be in front of <laughs> the no. voice. This right here is hard to do. Podcast. Ooh, I don't like being in front of these or these. I do I do I, not. Maybe, but I'm getting acclimated. I'm getting over it because people keep asking me, and I'm I'm like I'm not a no girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a no girl. Especially when you see people supporting you. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, exactly. But that's how I should be, though. Yeah. That's how I should. He. He. Go ahead. Like I just. I tell them, like, when I used to do the rap music, I really, I liked the rap, but I hated doing shows. 
Because yeah. I was such a, a background person all the time, you know, I just go in the studio and be like, okay, lay this track, lay this track, you know what I'm saying, I'm going to come in with the vocals, but as far as like being out in the world and have to do the music, I hate it, I hate it doing it, you know what I'm saying, so it's like with me, I'd rather be like behind the shit, you know, then have to, you know, be in front of everybody and talk and speak, but you know, like Absolutely. over the years I just became more comfortable in front of cameras because I used to hate cameras. I didn't want yeah, nobody to take pictures. I didn't want nobody to do shit. So that nigga was like two five. It's like <laughs> some things I feel like I can't say no to. They're asking me to do panels on sync licensing and I'm like, who you say on the panel? You know what? Okay, I can't say no to that. Yeah, let me. That's that's more connection. Let me put my big girl pants you know on. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> so, but, so, and I'm but that's so how I feel more comfortable with it. You, when you get put on a spot, yeah. it's for a reason. Yeah. So it's really, I was made for it, or I wouldn't have got put on the spot. Yeah. Not accept the challenge. You gonna either learn, or they don't like you. Yeah. If you learn, I'm gonna do both. That, that's both, for real. I'm always a student. Yeah, so yeah. I never know everything. Kobe, <laughs> Kobe, man, I always lead to the great Kobe Dean Bryant, man. Kobe, he was a great learner. He used to talk to Michael Jordan in the middle of the game. How did you do this? What were you doing? What, what are you looking at? Why are you doing it? Why he's playing this man? And then go and learn and do the exact <laughs> same thing on other motherfuckers that made a whole great career of it. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I, what did I tell you before the show? I'm not just talking to you today. I'm embracing what we're going to talk about today. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got to be a student and you got to be, you got to be able Always. to do both. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You got to be a student of the game and you got to be an expert Especially of the game. Especially in this game because it's forever changing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's why I asked you. How do you keep up with the trends? I didn't answer the rest of that either. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm always reading different um, publications, M music business worldwide, Billboard. I read them. I get emails. I read it every day. It's always something. So I read it to keep up with stuff. And now let's backtrack because you said you did seminars and you took classes. What was those classes and those seminars? Free knowledge is the best knowledge. So like, um, and I'm sure you pay for knowledge too. Right now, I'm paying for it. So tap into the knowledge that you pay for it too. So I go to Berkeley College of Music now, which is one of the most prestige colleges for music. So, see, but I'm paying for it now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, but shoot, let's see. Um, the Grammy Museum, they have a, they have different classes that they offer for free. Mm -hmm. Music Business 101. That was the one I took. I don't know the other ones. But they offer other classes, so. all for free online. Just gotta go find a music, a Grammy Museum dot com. I imagine is where I found it. Maybe it's right there. Um, so tap in. Puffy had this six week. Whoa! Anything that these people do personally, I really don't follow the blogs. I don't follow. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like time stops. <laughs> Follow it. I yeah. block all that. I agree. Keep the business separate from personal. And Puffy. the music and all that. Give me the music. I don't care what you're doing with your personal life. Cause Puffy, it's, it's, more it's more magnified. It's more magnified because you are who you are. We, right. we see every damn thing you do when you take a, a when you sit on this shit and something come out wrong. We gonna know. Yeah. And so he said it best, man. He can't go nowhere. He can't even yeah, go to like, I don't. I really don't get off into all of that. Period. None of it. Um, but. He has he had this six week course that I found for free. I think. Yeah, both did something for free. That's fire. Yeah, I, and it was on all aspects of of the industry, from fashion to marketing to this to that. Um, I think it's called so got diverse fashion designers right here too. Three fashion designers right here too. You know what I'm saying? Diverse. And you got some in the crowd. We got a crowd. Diverse <laughs> representation. I think. Um. It's right there. Um, Song Trust. If y'all in the, y'all should know about Song Trust. Mm -hmm. Read this one out. Read. 
ASCOT and the BMI. It's it's a way to help you collect your publishing royalties. Right. See? They have a resources tab. They got so much good shit on there. <laughs> From teaching you about split sheets to royalties to publishing to this to that. Right there. It, they got a lot of good shit. I think that was one of the very first places I learned a lot a of lot shit of was on Song Trust. It's a resources tab. Everything under that motherfucker. They give you a free split sheet template and all of that. See? Because I think a lot of people here um, when they started out, most of them was using like indie. Uh, when they first started, it was like for your royalties and stuff like that. Indie, BMI, BMI, yeah, BMI, BMI. BMI. But it's, but it's, Ascot. but that they don't collect your royalties. That's your performance rights organization. They don't collect all of the royalties. Mm -hmm. It's still so many different entities that you go through to collect the royalties. Mm -hmm. So, um, and now you done tapped in what she done learned them from. So like I said, you can't just be a student of the game. You got to be a learner too. And I think what I do too is That's sign up for a lot of these people's newsletters. And then they'll send you newsletters and say, hey, we got a webinar going yep. on on this. Yep. And you can register for free. Um, we got a webinar going on about this. You can register for free. So how, how, did, how did you weed out the scammers? I go to the real company. BMI. The scammers as far as what? I'm sorry. Because even on like social media. I'm sure you diving into a lot of the social media accounts as far as marketing and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't deal with none of that shit. Yeah, I see If you come in my DM to on ten dollars to post it, I'm I'm not. I get a lot of those. I don't, I don't, I don't use those. I don't do none of it. Yeah. I just don't do it. And All them scammers. and thank God my mom is who she is. And she knows I so like many it. people, and I can just kind of ask I like her. To use a lot of connections. Yeah. I'm we big on connections. Yeah. That's how I found when I am ready to get to a space where we're looking for a person to do our marketing, I have a person already. Blessings. Thank God. Blessings. I'm not going out because I'm scared. I don't know. <laughs> I'm scared of people. I ain't gonna lie. Like I don't trust nobody. People out there by saying you can tell me, me that. You sitting right next to Quincy Jones and put somebody on the phone and you're supposed to be Quincy, I'm gonna hang up. Yeah, I ain't gonna hang it up. I ain't gonna say Quincy. I ain't gonna say Quincy. As soon as you say Quincy, I don't care who it is. Jermaine Debray, I don't care who it is. I ain't gonna hang up. I ain't gonna hang up. I don't believe you. Quincy, I don't believe you. Bring them to my face. Bring them to my face. Like, or put that man on FaceTime or something. Like, don't give me proof. Yeah, like, give me proof. I don't want to hear that. Talk to my hero. I don't want to hear it. Like, give me the knowledge. Give me the understanding. We big on that, man. Yeah. Motherfucker said I'm not paying you do a whole you two hundred dollars to do this. To put my, I'm not paying you two thousand to put my artist on this show. I'm not uh, paying you to market. I mean, now these these little showcases and this and that, we do all that. Yeah, yeah that's business. We gonna do all that, and then, then we gonna get to where they gonna start paying us. We not. Thank you. Like. Oh, oh. Go ahead, pop your shit. Well, I mean, all these pay all this to get on this show. What is we doing? Like, <laughs> do I get a song with one of these people I'm opening for? I'm the opening act. How many people are you about to guarantee about to be in a crowd while I'm opening to do this? Do I get radio play? Do I get a radio interview? What type of promotion am I getting? for me if I'm giving you these artists. Like, sir, I'm not paying you 2000 for my artists to do it. None of that. If it ain't coming with none of this. It, it got to come with. Everything got to make sense. Right. If it ain't money, it ain't sense. Every, and I'm, I just feel like I know too many people at the end of the day. So you go ahead and do your thing. I'm going to make some shit happen over here. Anyways. You ain't got to worry about it. I love to say this. I, I'm a big Nipsey hustle. It's a marathon. It ain't no race. It ain't. I ain't. Yeah. Hell no. I ain't. Mm -hmm. What you think you about to rush? I'm going to mm -hmm. get anyway. I trust the process. I trust the process. I don't rush the process. That's a fact. I That's trust it fact. big time. That's a fact. It'd be too many good things happening for me. That I mean, I organically. It's so weird how I seem to sometimes speak things into my universe, and that ain't weird though. It just be like. Well, that, that ain't weird. Oh, that's the way to go. Yeah, that's that, that's, that's manifestation. That's manifestation. Even the Bible says that. Come on, man. As a man speaks, he do it. Come on. Yeah. 
Speaking into existence. I tell people yeah. you be you be in a position and a place where you're supposed to be. And I at put that time. and I put myself you know in places at, at that time because everybody look at it, well I'm not here in life and I'm not there in life and I tell them sometimes you don't need to be here in life. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? I always explain to people. I always use this as a an example. I was like, when I was 17 years old, my aunt died. She left me her house in Indian Village. You know, I kept the house for a while. Then I sold it for like 170000 which today is probably like about a $500,000 house. I sold it for $170,000. What do you think I did with that $170,000? Louis! <laughs> Maybe like the wind. <laughs> you couldn't tell me it's shit. It was 17. Yeah, you Ooh, could. was going crazy. I had a goddamn iron rock with rims on it. <laughs> My little painted slimes, boy. I was out every day. Boy, that was the cars back then. I couldn't even know about it. Look at me. 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 How I spent that money back then compared to today. Yeah. Now, you know, today if I had, had that house, it would be it, it'd be going a lot different. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? That was the wrong time for me to have it at the wrong age. So I tell people everything that comes in life comes at the right time. We just eager to have it. Mm -hmm. But you know, it comes definitely when we're mature enough to handle it. But let it be a lesson. For sure. That part. Mm -hmm. Timing is everything. Mm -hmm. I say it over and over again. Getting into that, man. We got to get ready to close this show. But before we close this show, <laughs> there's two things I'm going to want to ask you. And the first question is pretty much based off what he just said. That I love to ask everybody when they come on this show. <laughs> you already exposed your age. <laughs> Beating 46. <laughs> Say no. Say no. Say no. Yeah, the age that you are now. We're going to cut that. 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 You don't got to cut it. So. Okay. I love it. Love it. Yes, That's I'm 46. I just it. turned 46 February 13th. Happy, happy belated birthday. Thank you. Happy belated birthday. Thank you. Being the age that you are now, going back to the 18-year-old you, what are you saying? What is that dialogue? What are you teaching? What are you motivating? What are you telling her not to do or do more or get comfortable with doing? Put you first. Set boundaries. Mm. Talk your shit. That's the main thing right there. You first. <laughs> mm. You are the most important. Why? Because honey child, if I would have known that or if I would have had that mentality, when I needed it, <laughs> where would I be right now? <laughs> Sometimes you, givers you, come in last. I don't put them houses in California that I be drooling over. Whew. I would probably have something close to me. I don't know if I would. I don't Cali, want that. I you know, I don't want that. They be big. They be big. Ooh. I would have that. I would. Little. I would be living in Cali though. Cali expensive place to live. I would live there. We got us a following Cali. I would be in Cali. Shout out to the Cali followers. And I would be blessings. deeper off into this music. I would be doing way much more. more. I would be doing the stuff that I'm supposed to be doing. Mm. Mm. That's dope. Yeah. That's dope. Set boundaries. I would have let, let nothing hinder me from that, mm. and I did. That's more so like know thyself. It's this lesson that's out that's real heavy. Know thyself. Yeah. And inside of that, it really teach you boundaries and understanding. Mm, I like that. I like that. So we're going to leave that. We're going to go from there to tie in my community, our community, his community with your community, your community with his community, with my community, with our community. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and make us all one. What you saying to bridge that gap? Shoot that noodle. Okay, yeah, so I'm the lady with the golden ear. <laughs> I really enjoyed myself on this podcast. That's blessing. I want to shout out my artists, all of them. From <laughs> Oga Rowland, to D. Rick, to Ari B, to Dollar Man, to Almighty Real, to Travi Ray, 
Sabito Lays, my podcast, Intelligent Intellectually Petty Radio, <laughs> my upcoming uh, venture, straight on all platforms, and my brand, The Lady with the Gold Hair. We here. We just tapped in, so all of that with any and everything podcast, man. We definitely enjoyed this conversation. We don't make business, we make family. And we tie it into business. That's connection. Okay. That's for us. So, man, let's get ready to close out. Let's jump into that fuck you for the week. P, who you fucking on? We're going to make it real simple today. <laughs> <laughs> fucking on Raymond. And if y'all don't know who Raymond is, Take that shot. <laughs> Usher Raymond. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason I say that, that brother got his hands on everybody one. God damn, just let my woman go to the show in peace, boy. <laughs> Shit. You know, you ain't got to touch everybody. That's Spicy Usher, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He, that brother just doing too much. Just sing the goddamn song, man. <laughs> he, everybody, every time you see him, he hugging on somebody. But that ass is be liking it. Too. Fuck that. This, this is just a break. This is a break. Like, damn, give a brother a break, bro. Hey, he see Jacquees with me. He's having a good time. <laughs> just give a brother a break. You know? Nikki Palmer, man, baby daddy, like, another one. <laughs> <laughs> my 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 he might change that now he's married. Ah oh, shit. He might change that now he's married. He might change. He might change. His wife might no, not like that. No, no. that's no, that's he's us. Married. No, that's us, man. That's, it's that's different now. He's married now. That's, that's, that's his now. character. That's his character. That's his art. Everybody gotta expect. You gotta. You gotta expect. As a wife, you gotta expect us to be us. I mean, yeah. You, know, you should. What was my man name? That was at Five Heartbeats and shit. Rushed up to the uh, stage and started singing to my man, woman, and shit. You gonna expect that? Come on, man. Goddamn Usher, right there. <laughs> somebody, somebody gonna kidnap his ass. That's what's gonna happen. <laughs> 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 they gonna have him in a warehouse, tenderizing his ribs. Usher, <laughs> <laughs> right now, you right there. He gonna be touching on everybody. Usher concert already sold out. Yeah, he's winning yeah. right now. Yeah. He just made the smartest move. Only one he couldn't touch is not Mary. I'm Mary one buying this shit. Like, get your ass out. No, he touched on I'm Mary. He hit it with with the ooh on the hip. Ooh on the hip and then then. Come on, man. The signature move. His signature move. It's a ooh. I'm Mary one buying that shit. You can't go. You ain't going. Usher is Usher, man. Usher, man. You can't tell me nothing bad about Usher, man. Usher, do Outside of Usher, then I'm a P. Diddy. I separate the R from the <laughs> <laughs> I separate the ones and the two. I separate the ones and the two. I don't even know about yeah, that. Usher, uh, no. Allegedly. Yeah, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Allegedly. allegedly. I don't <laughs> P. Diddy said all they was doing was eating cereal. Yeah, yeah allegedly. That's all. You want to tap into that? <laughs> I got to ask her, do you want to tap into him fucking it up, fucking on us? No, I'm good. <laughs> I like this conversation so my motivation for the week is something that was pretty much stringing in this conversation that I had a dialogue from is pay attention to your past talking to her I'm sure she understands, so I'm not gonna make it seem like she don't understand her past or none of that shit. Or like I'm just being psychotic. <laughs> Alright, none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? None, none of that. None of that. None of that. None of that. But pay attention to your past because talking to her, she made a comment. She said, you know, she was just a regular person before COVID. And then she just became this musician and management person. You know what I'm saying? No. No. She had the whole dialogue from her mother. To her with Mason, to you know the classes she done, to you know upcoming to Berkeley, and it's we kind of tend to take that part for granted, but it's still a part of who we are. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I know, <laughs> I know, <laughs> but be the good with the bad, the bad with the good. Like I say, the balance, all of that, the ones and the twos, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, 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 but just let's be diligent in the past and allow the past to teach us 
as we move forward, man, because there's so much knowledge in it. You got to learn from your past to be able to create your future because your presence is in between that. You know what I'm saying? That's my whole deal for you. You want to type it there? Just know what you want and don't let anything or anybody hold you back from doing that at any point. And just know it's never too late to pursue your dreams. Ever, not ever too late. P, you want to tap into that? No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> he said, no, I'm good. So from there, we're going to jump into that rocket or drop it. We're jumping back into that rocket or drop it. So make sure y'all tap into it. Make sure y'all hit those poles, hit those views, and run them streams up for Dog. That's our producer. Meet your Almighty with fake love. Meet your Almighty with fake love. You know, we keep it here, keep it together. Peace, love, and everything good. Like shit, I carry on to the nigga to his next life. Need a parachute, we hop out, we that damn fly. Wood at the wood, man, so much shit me on my damn mind. These niggas fake for real, dog. This prank, I don't have time. Yeah, folks, with fake love, I'd rather see the real. Hey, I'd rather see the real. I say, folks, with fake love, I'd rather see the real. Hey, rather see the real. Hey, nigga, folks, with fake love, rather see the real. Hey, don't fuck with me for real. Don't be smiling on my face, nigga. Fuck with me for real. I'd rather see the real. Hey, show me and my niggas good. That's it. Fuck these niggas.